So, you want a camera that's great at both photos and videos, but you want it on a budget. Of course you do. Well, have you met the Canon M200? This is a fantastic everyday camera that's going to give you great results, but there's a catch. Canon has the Canon M50, which costs about the same and is arguably better. So, in this video, let's figure out if the Canon M200 is worth it and maybe, just maybe, should you buy a different camera? By the way, if you're new to the channel, we talk about anything and everything to do with camera gear, including teaching you guys how to take better photos and videos. So, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, it helps the channel out, lets me keep making more of these videos for you guys, and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content, and as always, I'm gonna leave links down below to all of the products that we talk about today. Let's get into the video. So, let's talk about who was the Canon M200 made for and who should and shouldn't buy it. So the person that I really recommend this camera to is someone that just wants an everyday camera, something nice and compact with a flip up screen so you can see yourself, but you want something small that you can put into your backpack, into your purse, into your jacket pocket, and just be on your way. The M200 is super well designed. It has a touch screen on the back so you can use it to focus but also control everything on your camera. If you can use an iPhone, you can use this camera and you're going to get the quality of a high-end YouTube camera like the Canon M50 because the processor and sensor is exactly the same. Both cameras have an APS-C size 24 megapixel sensor which is going to give you not only great photos but great videos as well. However, the only thing holding me back is that at this price point, the M200 is missing a few features that the M50 has and the M50 is only about $100 more. So let's do a deep dive on what the M200 actually does. So in terms of photos, as I mentioned, this has a 24 megapixel sensor, but what is special about this camera is that it has 14 bit raw, which is going to give you tons of flexibility when you're editing your photos in Photoshop and Lightroom. But the JPEGs on this camera are still pretty great. So even if you're editing these photos on your phone, you're going to get very solid results. But I do have one problem with this camera when it comes to photos, and that is, it only does 6.1 frames per second when the M50, which is only $100 more, does 10 frames per second. That's a pretty substantial step down for only $100 less. But I am a photo nerd and chances are you don't care about the frame rate in the camera. What you do care about is getting the entire friend group in the shot or getting your entire outfit in the shot for Instagram. I get it, I have sisters. So thankfully this camera actually comes with the perfect starter lens. The lens on this camera goes all the way from 15 millimeters to 45 millimeters, which basically means you can get a really wide shot and a close-up shot all with one lens. However, it's a variable aperture lens and the lens overall is not very fast, which means it's pretty bad in low light conditions, but that's okay because, drum roll please, it has a flash. Overall, in the realm of photo, when it comes to photo quality and ease of use, this camera is going to give you everything you need. But my favorite thing about this camera is actually the autofocusing system. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocusing system with eye tracking. So it's great in both photos and videos. Like honestly, the autofocus in this camera is nearly flawless. And having great autofocus in photos isn't really anything too special. The technology is really advanced but having autofocus this good in video is pretty impressive. So let's talk about the video in this camera. When it comes to videos, the Canon M200 is top notch. Not only does it have great quality, but also great colors. When it comes to colors, specifically for video, it really matters because with photos, you have so much flexibility, but with video, not so much. So the colors that you get straight out of camera really do matter. When it comes to frame rates in video, this camera does full HD all the way up to 60 frames per second with the cinematic frame rate of 24 frames per second. And that 60 frames per second will actually give you two times slow motion, which again, is a great feature to have. And again, if you're a fan of slow motion, this camera also does 120 frames per second at four times slow motion. However, it only does that at 720p, which is half of full HD which isn't the best for resolution, but it's a pretty dope feature to have. But the thing that really sells me on the M200 when it comes to video is the amazing colors and just the overall crisp video quality. However, just like photos, I do have a problem with this camera when it comes to video, and that is 
there is no headphone jack for external audio, which, well, if you're someone that wants to do professional YouTube stuff or anything serious where you're going to need crisp audio, this camera is not it. But if you're someone that's holding the camera close to your face, the audio is pretty good. It's actually really, really usable. So here's an audio test. What's up guys, we're gonna do a test for the Canon M200 for audio. Right now I'm pretty close to the camera. The autofocus is doing a great job. But if I step away from the camera, like I'm back here, or if I'm back here, you probably can't hear me that well. I'm not really raising my voice too much, but chances are you really can't hear me that well. And I'm only about like maybe, maybe 10 feet back. So the audio does go down quite a bit when you put a little bit of distance between you and the camera. That's one of the downsides of having a camera that's internal audio only, but for the type of person that this camera's for, chances are you're mostly gonna be filming yourself or you're gonna be doing most of this handheld. So audio wise, I would say it's a 4.5 out of 10. If this had an external microphone, solid five. Now this camera does have 4K, which is great, but it has one major flaw. Unfortunately, when you go into 4K mode with this camera, your sensor gets cropped in by 1.7, which basically zooms in your image by almost two times, and it makes the wide shot completely unusable, but it is nice to have a little bit of extra zoom in your image if that's something you need. Personally, I do not like the 4K out of this camera, mainly because you throw away half of your sensor, which means half of your megapixels, and that 4K just isn't very detailed or sharp. If you're looking for a 4K camera, this is unfortunately not it. I really recommend looking to a Sony camera, which I will talk about at the end of this video. Also, when it comes to low light in video mode, you will need a faster aperture lens. While the body itself is decent in low light, you will need a lens that can simply take in more light because that flash that I mentioned earlier is good for photos, but it will not do a thing when it comes to video. So overall, the M200 is a really solid camera that's going to give you great photos and videos, but what really sets this camera apart and worth getting over something like the M50, which is basically the same camera, is the design. When it comes to ergonomics and design, the Canon M200 is really made for someone that's on the go or someone that wants to save space. The camera has an extremely slim profile specifically made to fit into a purse or a jacket pocket. When it comes to buttons on this camera, they're really minimal. Canon really wants you to use the touchscreen on the back of this camera to operate most of it. But have no fear, it does have the standard buttons like the record button, the shutter button, the menu button, basically everything you need to know to not feel completely lost. But this really is a camera that you're going to be using mostly with the touchscreen. One thing that I do like about the M200 is the flip up screen because it's great to be able to see yourself. However, I much prefer the flip out screen on the M50 is because I can do a high angle shot, a low angle shot, and I can see myself, which honestly, this top up flip up screen, whatever it's called, just doesn't have the same utility. But it does lend to a slightly slimmer profile in the M200. But if you're a little bit intimidated, or maybe this is your first camera, be sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. Because in this course, I'm gonna show you step by step how to take both pro photos and videos, saving you time and money. The one thing that no one tells you is that you don't need to spend thousands on fancy equipment and lighting to get great results. What you actually need are skills and knowledge on how to work your camera, understand things like shooting tips, composition, and editing. So if you're interested in taking your photo and video game to the next level, check out the link in the course down below. And let's get back into the video. So at the end of the day, how do you know if the M200 is right for you or should you get the slightly more expensive Canon M50? Personally, it's really simple. If you're someone that's a casual, everyday photographer and video person, you're just taking these photos and videos for yourself, you're not trying to put them on YouTube or do really anything professional with them, this camera is great. You're going to love the touch controls, it's nice and slim, it's easy to use, and you're going to get great quality out of this camera. However, if you're someone that's even mildly serious about their photos and videos, I do recommend spending the extra $100 to get the Canon M50. Not only will you get a faster frame rate for photos, but you're also going to get an input for the external audio and the flip up screen on the side, the side articulating screen has way more utility and you're going to need it if you're going to do anything even mildly professional. And if you're somebody that's serious about doing their videos in 4K for whatever reason, 
Neither of these cameras is a good option. For you guys, I really recommend something like the Sony a6100. It's about $200 more, but it's going to give you amazing 4K without crop and with great colors, lots of detail. And if you're in that price point of about $200 to $300 more than these cameras, I also recommend looking into the Fuji X-T3, the Fuji X-T30. The Fuji X-T3 actually gives you 4K at 60, while the Fuji X-T3 gives you 4K at 30 frames per second with only a minor crop. But the real reason to look into the Fuji cameras is the color science. The colors out of the Fuji cameras is absolutely amazing. If you're planning on doing something slightly creative or artsy, the Fuji cameras are going to be a great fit. Also, the Fuji cameras are way faster when it comes to photos. I do recommend looking to those cameras if you're kind of creative. Also, as a bonus, if you're somebody that just cares about having a slim camera that will fit into your pocket, I do recommend looking into the Canon G7X Mark II or Mark III. This is a point and shoot camera with a built-in lens and it's extremely small, compact, will fit into your pocket and weirdly enough has better specs than these cameras but has a smaller sensor. Well guys, that's pretty much it for my review on the Canon M200. Let me know in the comments down below, are you getting the M200 or the M50? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. It helps the channel out, lets me keep making more of this stuff for you. And if you wanna learn how to take your photo and video game to the next level, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. And I will either see you in the course or in the next video. Peace.